So welcome. Um, I'm the, in that way the last presentation for now. Um, and mine will be hopefully quite short and also I will do this in English mainly because I'm not going to torture you with my very horrible, very slow Dutch. Um, but I do understand Dutch, so don't, when I join you always can speak Dutch. Um, but yeah, I want to give a little bit of a kind of a perspective uh, of, of animal use in society as well as talking a little bit about types of research which because this is something that we had the impression already in the past few years is not always as clear um, in a way. So for this is just something we were putting together. We couldn't even get all, na um, all numbers because they just don't exist in a way of how are currently animals used in our society. Because right, we're going to talk mainly about research here, which is down here. But actually, of course, we currently as a society have agreed that we, we use animals and in multiple ways. I mean, the largest number, of course, is that we use animals for food and as in humans, which is uh, especially, I mean, in, in the Netherlands also quite a large number. But we also um, use them in other ways that people are often not aware of. So, for example, that the numbers of animals killed by pets or killed as vermin are actually in the, even in the Netherlands in 140 um, million um, animals per year, roughly. Um, and of course, all these different ways of how to use animals, some of them were closer than others in a way of replacing this animal use. So food for humans, I think everybody is aware of these, uh, number one, that we can just live vegan. Um, but the other idea of that there are food replacements that are like meat from a vat or something, which has actually progressed quite um, nicely. So there it's currently more of a choice for most people. Um, same from um, our colleagues at TPI will tell you that uh, toxicology screening is actually one of these candidates where the the development of animal-free innovations is really quite advanced. And there, for example, it seems that legislation is actually a bit behind the advancement in that case. However, um, when it comes to animal research, we tend to be a bit more in the focus um, from other people uh, or from um, uh, society, even so actually our numbers tend to be much lower than any of the other ones. And when it comes to research, we tend to be all lumped together, even so we're not. And so that is what I would like to, to separate out a bit now in the talk. So overall, we think we can, or we, that you can actually take animal research and put it into three different categories. The main one everybody thinks of is preclinical research. So classic preclinical research would be, can we cure, prevent a disease or symptom? So right, can drug X elevate symptoms Y? This is what everybody will think of when you hear animal research. However, this is just actually a portion of animal research. This is also the type of animal research where power analysis and pre-registration, which you've probably already heard of, becomes quite important and also is something where you can do this because, right, I want to know if dr drug X can get rid of symptoms Y. So I can clearly say this is the effect I'm looking for. Now I can calculate with a power analysis how many animals will I need because it's a very clear thing. I can have a go, no go point. However, as I said, this is only possible in something that's so straightforward. Another type of research, and that you've already heard of quite a lot now in the talks from uh, Judith and Neil, is that what we have termed now as basic preclinical research. So this is research that's actually under, trying to understand the disease. And this is different. This is different than I'm trying to cure a disease because at this point I do not know much before. I cannot create an organoid necessarily because I don't even know what's wrong. So in this case, this is something where, for example, could be how does a genetic predisposition of something lead to another disease or to a symptom? And, or how does stress lead to um, development of anxiety issues? So this is kind of the, another type of research. And then finally, and that's kind of my background in a way, is basic, pure basic research, so understanding the healthy function. And there's, especially in this case, it's also very, very difficult to move now to animal-free methods because if we do not understand something, how should we know if an alternative is viable or in any ways representing what we're trying to understand? I mean, the classic is in this case, people will often come with computer models. Um, yes, we use computer models to complement our research and computer models can help us maybe reduce the an, an number of animals we use. However, um, I cannot build a model of something I do not understand. So, because right, the, the computer model is based on my no understanding of the, the, the principle. And so one of the questions, of course, what you could do in this basic research is something that I'm, of course, interested in, is uh, where in the brain are memory stores? And I have to stay this very openly because I do not know. Of course, their literature and background will tell me where to look, but I cannot say, I cannot create a power analysis because I don't even know what I'm looking for in a way. 
And now during, um, you're going to have a little tour, so that's what I'm going to also explain a bit today and now as well, because uh, you're going to tour our animal, the CDL. So, so what is our CDL? So our, um, we have different housing facilities within this unit, as uh, within this building, going from conventional housing um, to IVC, so more, more isolated housing. We have uh, breeding facilities and we have also experimental surgical facilities for different types of animals. And this is really the centralized unit, which all everybody around here, so the whole um, Radbot as well as Radbot UNC make use of. We also have specific technology centers, so these are the way more focused centers. The one is Prime, that's a preclinical imaging, and so um, here we do a lot of pre actually preclinical, preclinical basic as well as basic research. Um, and we sadly will not be able to show you this unit um, because it's actually in a different uh, cleanliness level, <laughs> as we call it, in, so uh, um, as our the TNU, which we will show you. And that's a problem, you cannot enter one and go to the other because we actually protect our animals from different microbiomes. Um, but that's actually one of the main units that we're going to show you is the translational neuroscience unit where most of us work. Um, here we mainly are currently doing preclinical um, basic research as well as basic research and the main focus of our research is looking at stress, uh, memory and pre uh, genetic predisposition for certain diseases.